Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the member forum on chapter challenges and opportunities. I'm your moder moderator, and before we get started, I want to go over the agenda for today's session. I will start by giving an update on some of the chapter challenges, successes, and opportunities. Following that, OSAD members and staff will be providing updates on the new virtual platform for engagement, chapter involvement with the colleges, and a recap of the chapter report cre created following the brainstorming session uh, from the last in-person conference in June 2019. Please note, during the updates, members' lines will be muted. Will be muted. Following the updates, we will we will begin with the interactive part of this event, where members will go to brainstorming breakout rooms. I will provide more details on this after the updates. We are fortunate to have had a message from our premier at uh, Tuesday's uh, Tuesday's uh, opening remarks. I would like to invite uh, honor honorable uh, Stan Cho the Associate Minister of Transportation to bring uh, greetings. Hi everyone, Stan Cho, Associate Minister of Transportation. Wanted to take a moment to wish you a great conference. I hope it's the last one we need to do virtually so I can attend in person next time. Uh, but I wanna thank all your certified members for your great advice you give our Ministry of Transportation. It's invaluable. We're building a lot of highways and we're going to need you. Thank you for all that you do. I wanna also thank Rosanna Bags uh, for all that you have organized during these difficult times uh, I wish you the best at OACETT, and next time I hope to see you in person and maybe shake a couple hands. Take care. See you soon. Thank you, Associate Minister Cho. Uh, we are honored to have you acknowledge OSAT at our virtual conference and look forward uh, to working with you in the future. As Vice President of Professional Affairs and Services Board, one of my responsibilities is to ensure we have a successful and viable chapter ecosystem. OSAT's uh, 27 chapters exist to serve and engage the members locally and ensure they have a professional community that provides events such as networking sessions, annual chapter meetings, student activities at, 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 at the college, uh, golf tournaments, plant tours, continuing professional development, mentorship, and the list goes on. Not only do chapters provide events for members, but they also offer a variety of volunteer opportunities essential for making professional connections, developing leadership skills, and getting involved with your community. Like myself, many, many of our chapter volunteers have run positions on OSAC board and council. Many of OSAC's chapters, chapter volunteers have been recognized for their commitment to the association. As one of the award presenters at this year's OSAD Gala, I was fortunate to have had the opportunity to award two OSAD members and long-term chapter volunteers with the Distinguished Service Award. This is not only for, for this is not the only form of recognition members can receive. The chapters also provide volunteer recognition certificates and membership milestones for 10, 25, 40, 50, and 60 years. Many chapters also provide le local leaderships to encourage future generations to get involved with the, with the profession. While these are individual forms of recognition, OSAD recently introduced Chapter Engagement Award that offer monetary awards for, to select winning chapters based on their engagement with local colleges, corporations, co uh, and, and communities. Chapters also serve as recruitment tools. Many students and professionals get their first OSAD experience through the chapters. Whether they are invited after a college visit by a college uh, by, by a colleague or instructor, uh, this, this vital human connection is essential to demonstrate how the association can help benefit individuals' careers and enrich their uh, personal and professional lives. I'm a firm believer in the term volunteer community and know that OSAD chapters provide this opportunity for its members. The term community is a, a, a proposed in more ways than one. On a personal note, I would like to add that I have made many good friends through, uh, through my involvement with, with the chapters. In addition to being a community and acting as a, a, a recruitment tool, chapters are also an essential vehicle for helping disseminate information about OSAD to a local audience. 
while the association does an excellent job of providing electronic and printed communications relaying important information to its, to its members, it's often chapters that help to reinforce these messages. To quote Marshall McLuhan, the medium is the message. You, the volunteers, are the medium. Since our last conference in, in November 2020, the chapters have had success, some success and challenges. We all know that the pandemic made it difficult for chapters to uh, hold some of uh, the uh, same annual events as they did in the previous years. With the help of the chapter and program advisor, many found new and creative ways to pivot the uh, services and events they provide members. I would now like to highlight some of the challenges, successes, and opportunities for such chapters. All association chapters experience their uh, challenges. OSAT is not alone when it comes to this. While the pandemic put a damper on, on in in-person meetings, many chapters quickly pivoted to online offerings. The challenges I am about to mention have been noted by some members of the chapter executives, another chapter, and program advisor. These include difficulty sourcing committed volunteers to uh, head chapter executives, a lack of participation in local chapter activities, decreasing uh, student uh, engagement, and the need for chapters to provide additional support with corporate outreach. Again, I want to stress that all chapters do not experience these issues. I'm thrilled to have you, the volunteers, Join us today as your feedback will help us tackle these issues. Even though there are challenges, most such chapters have had many successes throughout the past year. From the Cornwall chapter webinar presentation on International Space Station, which saw 310 members in attendance, to the Central Region's well-attended Women in Technology webin webinar panel on roles uh, through the years. I would be remiss if I did not include the Grand Valley chapter, pandemic, cha pandemic project contest that invited members to share what they got to do during the lockdown. Members submitted photographs of their home improvement and creative endeavors. The images only reminded me that I have a lot, lot of home improvement projects that I need to start. The Peel chapter also hosted several uh, trivia nights that allowed for uh, networking and uh, some uh, friendly com competition. And the COVID restrictions lifting, chapters uh, have begun to uh, host in-person events from Niagara and Sudbury Golf Tournament to Hamilton Chapters Technical and Educational Family Outing at the Ontario STEAM Heritage Museum and the Hamilton Force, uh, Forge FC game, for those who follow Hamilton Forge in the first place. Out of, the, out of challenges and successes come opportunities for growth. I will now highlight some of the many opportunities of how OSAT chapters are evolving. These include chapters utilizing member resources to create quality, continuing professional development presentations, and finding new ways to engage and network with the members virtually through activities like meet, meet, meet the employer, trivia, euchre, uh, happy hour and uh, Zoom breakout room discussions. Other successes include chapter support for local scholarship programs, OSAT's uh, 360 corporate partners getting involved at the chapter level, and a new virtual engagement platform. We need all the tools in our arsenal to make sure chapters can contribute, continue to evolve and meet their ever changing needs for our members. I now welcome David Terlizzi, Director of Professional Affairs and Services and Government Relations, to provide more information on the chapter's virtual engagement platform. Thank you so much, Shervin, and welcome everyone. Uh, good morning, and I know how busy you are, so I appreciate you being here today. And, uh, you know, I'm going to discuss something I think is exciting, and it's a 30,000 foot view, and, and I think it should be, I hope you find it interesting, and um, it's just, uh, again, a high uh, sort of high level overview of what we have in the pipes in terms of um, an engagement model for chapters. So um, as all of you know, in February, we released um, our, our new portal. And when I say portal, it's obviously linked to in the back end to our customer relationship management system. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, it was 
it was a difficult launch as all complex systems are. So, and, and I just want to highlight the fact that uh, the reason it's, it's working the way it is and, and we've come so far, great leadership at the top, but it's not even senior management. It's that a lot of my colleagues have worked endless hours to get this thing going. So thank you. Um, but the reason I brought it up is because there's a piece missing. We all know that. And that was some sort of a chapter module. And right now, uh, for the past year, um, we've had someone providing support on that, as you know, and that's our chapter and program advisor at Catherine Bloir. So um, first off, uh, if we can, I think we all need to give Catherine a virtual high five. Um, without her dedication, hard work, you know, we would be in a world of hurt. So I want to thank Catherine for all her great work. Uh, and I think, you know, if you can thank her because she's been doing a great, great job. So, um, but so let's get started and talk about what we have in plan for you uh, as, as a tool for the chapters. It's known as a member engagement management, management solution. It's a great big word. Uh, try to use it as often as you can, but essentially it's a chapter module. So let's go to the next screen and have a chat about it. So, perfect. So why are we doing this? So it's to find a platform that provides valuable resources and tools to better equip staff, us, right? As your team here uh, at office, we need to help you. So we need a, a tool for it as well. Volunteers, chapter executives, look, we know how, how hard you work. We know the time you put in and members to engage within the following areas. So <clears throat> these, this new platform will have potential to have seven modules. Um, so advocacy, now why, why did I put that in there? This module will allow you to advocate for the association through open forums, community forums. So that's a neat little tool that was never there before. So remember what you had before. You had your little microsites, which were fantastic. Thank you for working on those. But this is, takes it to the next level. So there'll be a chance to sort of advocate for OSEC. Chapter module itself, you will once again have the control, all 27 chapters, um, again, control once again of your chapters in terms of having a tool. Communications. Again, you're going to have the option to communicate with your chapters once more. I, although Catherine's doing a fantastic job, you'll once again regain control of that. And community. This is the key. You're going to have a community platform. I'm, I'm, a, little, I'm a little concerned to, to maybe mention uh, Facebook at this point, considering you know, the bad press of Facebook. But it's sort of like a system like that, where a community platform where you can all sort of engage and get together. Um, this module will have an event. So once again, you can sort of um, track your events and plan your events and post them, which is very vital. Now, look at the last two. These are pretty cool. Mentoring. You're going to have the option as a mentoring, uh, uh, mentoring system. I'll get into that in a bit, but we need to mentor more. With 25,000 people, it is a very important tool, and we'll talk about that. And again, it's not, you know, in your 30s, you can mentor someone in your 20s, 40s, 50s. 60s, 70s. And by the way, the, the river flows both ways. Someone who's younger can mentor someone who's older and new technology. Although that's a stereotype, I think you know what I'm trying to say with that. We can all help each other. Finally, volunteering, a whole ecosystem to track the volunteering. And you can make it whatever you want. Okay, we're at the beginning phase of this. So this is the member engagement management solution in nutshell. And by the way, uh, that's not just a screen cap uh, from some random website. Things have been grayed out, but that, that you see it says open form and maybe too small for you to see, but that member form, that's how it's going to look. You'll have your little member form and there'll be leaderboards, everyone will chat and there'll be an app, right? So we are going to go um, to the next level with this new platform for you, the chapters, not just for the executives, although you have your own module for everyone. Okay. So if you can go to the next slide. Okay. I wanted to look smart and put a graph with a whole bunch of squares on it, but actually uh, this does mean something. So particular platforms have modules and let's, <coughs> excuse me, let's discuss these modules. So community, the community module is what I mentioned where you have a platform to essentially, in fact, if you look at the Canadian Society of Association of Executives, they sort of use a similar platform. There's many vendors, but they're gonna have, you can have discussion forums, Q and A's, blogs, I'm not suggesting every item here be a part of it, but you can see there's a chock-a-block full of many opportunities. So while this has been a challenging year, inserting before what you had to what you're going to, uh, it's going to be pretty exciting and cool. So there's a community module. Now let's, let's go to the, to the right to communications. Again, you're going to have the capacity to email, um, 
have your little miniature campaigns, personalize your templates. I do think templates have to be standardized. We have that the, the ability to do that. And even segmentation, maybe you would just want to um, um, message certain people for certain industries, not sure, but there'll be a lot of um, options in this, this, this arsenal moving forward for this package. Now, if you go over to where the arrow is, frameworks, again, these are just general words used with these packages. You can see you have, you have uh, microsites, full CMS like you had before, nested communities. What that means, big fancy word, <coughs> is that there'll be a, a general community, but then it'll be little nested mic microsites for your own chapters. Um, the participation module includes the, mo the mentor on the right there, you see it, the mentoring volunteer uh, experience. And as you go down, I mean, it's self-explanatory. Uh, you see the virtual uh, event engagement. You'll have the opportunity to have that little module to set up your, your events, which are so vital. Um, so that's it. So that, that is sort of how these modules stack up on each other and you purchase different modules. Everyone does it differently. Just thought I'd show you how these things sort of click together. We say click, but it is obviously some integration in the background. Um, yeah, so if you can go to the next slide, we can sort of... Um, Perfect, thank you. So <clears throat> this is what you're gonna get. Let's have a quick chat about it because right now we're in the stages. It's sort of like a car, we're building a car. We know we need an engine, we know we need you know, wheels and we need a dashboard, but you know, these are the basic concepts we're gonna put together for you. So uh, microsites, once again, it's divided to chapters and let's talk about the platform. So congratulations, you're gonna have your 27 in independent sort of um, little microsites again. Great way to recruit membership and promote your activities because it is, it's public as it should be, right? Everyone should know uh, in this province and beyond what you're doing. And on the platform, it allows us to maintain uh, the branding. I hate using the B word, but branding is important. And we can, at head office, we can control that content if you want us to in terms of, you know, you need some help creating this content, we can control that. So email communications, uh, again, you're going to be able to fully email with all the chat of all your roster and your chapter as well. And you can archive your messages. That's pretty cool. So you can have this sort of history of what you sent out when, so you know it. On our end, data is king, right? We know that. Um, the team, specifically Catherine, <coughs> excuse me, will have the opportunity to gain insight into chapter activity engagement. So we can, can have this data to see when communications were sent out, what they were. Again, not about being big brother, it's about having this data so we can support chapters. So um, moving on, event registrations, you can manage uh, e event registrations online and process and track payments. Now, again, in the platform, we, us and you, if you want to, can gain insight into chapter participation and, and monitor engagement. So we, uh, you know, we can track everything now to see which chapters are doing what, how often they're doing it. This, this may inform chapter reports. This is great for Catherine when she does her analysis. It's great for all of us, right? So these are tools. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I do have a bit of a dry cough. It's not, it's not anything serious. So, um, so that's that's um, that's fantastic. If we can go to the next slide, please. Now this is cool. Document library. Chapters will have the ability to share and access documents within the platform, right? So, uh, and behind the scenes, provide key resources and materials for chapters to share and discuss, right? Gain insight on key topics and interests. So, so what does that mean, right? That means that <clears throat> just blue skying it here, Northern Region wants to have, um, uh, you know, some sort of CPD created on, on mining technology. Well, you know, you can post this on this sort of, um, um, sort of community that you have, right? You can post some ideas, hey, here's a great white paper, great discussion piece I saw. What do you think of using this or possible CPD? And you can share this on the platform now, right? Which is a cool tool to have. Um, discussion form. So you're gonna be able to communicate, communicate and collaborate with other chapter leaders. So this is the key with these forms. Yes, you can communicate with, um, within your chapter roster, you do that now. But now you can set up different boards for maybe with region, maybe with everyone. And the beauty there is we can track that, you can track that, we can gain insight into key topics of interest. We can monitor the engagement, right? What is the Northern region talking about? What is hot in that area? Our assumptions, it could be mining. Of course, that would make the ring of fire and all that, but maybe it's not, maybe it's additive manufacturing. 
so we can sort of gain insight into the discussion forum. So, and the beauty of that is we have eblast we send you, right? You used to send communications. We have eTech News. We, in fact, we email you separately. The key now is you're going to have a, a way to communicate with everyone, right? And again, this platform is not meant, it's meant to provide constructive criticism, ideas, expanded horizons, right? And, and get involved. That is the point when you have these discussion forums. And check them out online. Like I said, CCE has one. A lot of, a lot of organizations, organizations have them. So um, gamification, you've heard this before. The world is about gamification now, right? So with the gamification option, we can incentivize chapters to engage and participate in online activities and submit data in a timely manner, right? So what does that mean? I just, again, blue skying it here. You can, maybe a chapter chair says, you know what? For everyone in the chapter, <clears throat> roster, we're, we're looking to get some ideas or submit something by timely manner. Um, you know, you're, there's a leaderboard and you can sort of get some sort of prizes or whatnot. You can incentivize chapters to gamification to participate. Everybody wants something in life, let's be honest. So it's a good, good tool. On our end, on our end, we can monitor that engagement level with chapters, recognize and reward accordingly. So you can take full control of that. So gamification, you know, on the WOVA platform, I see the leaderboard. Um, um, you can see that on the leaderboard that people love that sort of leaderboard and gamification thing. So it's something that, that we wanna do. Um, as finally, performance dashboard. Okay, this system is going to have a performance dashboard. So, <clears throat> which means that chapters can submit and track activity requirements online. We here at head office now can monitor chapter activity in real time, right? We're going to have this dashboard and we can follow up with chapters. Great for Catherine to say, hmm, uh, I'm not picking on a chapter, I'm just randomly picking it, Toronto East or, or whatnot uh, needs, needs some support here. We can now track that. And again, not about Big Brother. It's about saying, well, where can some resources be pooled or directed to? So it's a great, great feature. Um, so let's, next slide, please. Perfect. Lots of stuff on the screen. I just wanna go over some quick things. So <clears throat> um, again, modern track, mo <clears throat> excuse me, monitor and track volunteer activity. We want that, we need that any associations about their volunteers. So now we're gonna have a tool for that. Training videos, we, we were, we're in the process of creating training videos and documentation that would be, could be posted on this platform. Timely notification on volunteer opportunities, right? People need to be recognized for volunteering. You're all busy, life is stressful, you need to be recognized. It could be accurate accounting of volunteer hours and CPD earned, CPD earn, that's possible. <clears throat> Again, the dashboard, Recognize volunteer efforts via leaderboard. Reward volunteer service via notifications and digital badging. I think we're all familiar with digital badging. It's a cool feature. This has the option to even create a, a system where it doesn't have to be complicated, where we have some digital badging. That's cool. Um, and award outstanding volunteers based on service hours and local impact. You have your self-submission of your community to service hours. Again, these are concepts we'll talk about internally. And <clears throat> excuse me, this is the last one I love. Identify and recruit qualified volunteers. So with these forums now, if you need a chapter chair or you need some support, a college liaison, you can now actually using this, this community platform, do a call out, find out who wants to be part of this new chapter and provide support. So I think that's a pretty cool tool. And I hope that, you know, um, that, that when it's completed, that you'll be happy. So I think I have one more slide before I wrap things up. So this is my hope in 2022, right? This is how I hope you feel when this, when this platform gets released. I don't, I don't recommend jumping on desks. I'm sure everyone has a policy about damaging uh, furniture, but I do hope that. So the last thing I'll say is this, where are we now? So we're in the early stages. We are currently working with three vendors and we will be selecting a uh, final one um, at the end of this year so that we can come back from the holidays fresh and get this system working for you. <clears throat> it's important to note that this system will integrate into our current Microsoft Dynamics platform. So yay. Um, last, last thing I wanna say, remember, ultimately this is your platform and we look forward to giving everyone updates and potentially have some focus groups. And I hope you're happy with it. Thanks again for taking time of your busy day and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and that's it. So thank you so much.
Thank you, David. Wow, that's amazing. A lot of, lot of stuff coming on, on board. Uh, and I'm excited about the addition of the vital membership engagement tool. Uh, as I know, uh, it will help uh, the take the chapters in the chapter interaction and communication to the next level. Uh, granted, the uh, virtual uh, platform can never replace in-person meetings. Uh, however, it will help uh, to facilitate these meetings in a more uh, uh, seamless fashion. Um, and I'd like to ask uh, Trisha Tadoldi, OSAT's Manager of College Partnerships, and Julie Baudry, uh, CTEC, RCCA, from Near North Chapter Chair, uh, College Outreach Liaison, and a Women in Technology Representative here to discuss the importance of chapter involvement with colleges. Thank you, Shervin, and good morning, everyone. It's nice to see so many familiar faces online today. And I am sure by this time next year, we will recognize many more faces. Now let's get started and discuss the importance of chapter involvement in college outreach. OSET has a long history of involving members in various aspects of college outreach from information nights to student ambassadors at the colleges. We are always looking for ways to further our connections with engineering technology students and uh, we have recently aligned our new uh, program, the college outreach program with our strategic priorities to achieve this goal. By enhancing our interactions and relationships with students, faculty members, we hope to further have impact on our member engagement, recruitment and retention. We feel that a vital piece of outreach's puzzle is having OSET's members share their professional experiences to a captive audience of students. OSET explains the what and how of membership. So that's what I'm doing. But it's you, the members, our advocates that explain the why. Why is it essential for students to join OSET? Why should students consider pursuing a certified engineering technologist or a certified technician designation? By communicating your professional experience on the career front, it's very important. And OSET will help put in the why into the perspective. Now. The new outreach initiative began in a virtual sitting. As you know, the pandemic resulted in a hold on all in-person visits. Chapter members would volunteer an hour of their time to provide their perspective on how OSET membership and certification has positively impacted their career. Furthermore, they would provide potential student members, potential student members, pardon me, with insight into how chapters operate and the services that OSEP provides to assist its members and communities. Many members have also elaborated on how uh, students can expect and what they can expect after graduation and what employers are looking for in today's competitive job market. This invaluable information is often only gained through personal experience. So in addition to our regularly scheduled webinars, we were also continuing to support our Ontario College faculty with webinars during their regularly scheduled classes. This allowed OSET and the chapters to build relationships uh, with educational institutions and of course our communities. Now, let's take a look at some of the challenges and opportunities and how we can make a greater impact with this initiative in 2022. Okay. So we wanna turn this slide into the uh, challenges and opportunities. Perfect, thank you. So for the challenges, obviously we have um, a lot of volunteers, but they may not be able to support due to family work and schedules. Uh, some individuals may be uncomfortable with public speaking, as well as a lack of volunteers in general. So that I think that we're actually going to be able to do well with that new um, engagement that David was talking about. So that'll be of, of use and help to us as well. Now for the next slide, we're going to talk about some of the opportunities. Now, opportunities being the importance of hearing from our members and on their perspective. I think this is so important because, you know, me with my role, I can educate students on, you know, what the certification process looks like, what our membership benefits are, and how the certification process works. But they want to hear from actual members what it's like to be certified and how it's impacted their career. So this is really important. I can't talk enough to how it really provides so much more value to our recruitment and retention of our members here in, in the province. And then of course, building relationships with colleges and the students. It's really important as we have 27 chapters throughout the province that we help uh, with building those relationships. 
And then of course, increasing engagement at the chapter level, because when we bring these new members on, we wanna be able to increase that engagement. And of course, extend the consistency of all outreach here in the province. Now I'm gonna move on to the next slide here, cause I wanna just profile how all the colleges here in Ontario and the cities in which they reside in. So as you can see, um, this is the province. Uh, typically uh, in, during a year, we, made, we would do about 200 uh, virtual webinars or presentations. So if we looked at 27 chapters, that may only be anywhere from eight to 10 um, presentations per year per chapter. So that's, we really wanna be able to disseminate that across all provinces. So it's one particular um, chapter that's helping out. So we will uh, certainly address that as well. So what we'll do now is um, we are going to be holding questions uh, at the end, but I just want to um, thank you all for your time today, and um, I'm going to turn it back over to Shervin. Thank you, Tricia. Uh, very informative. Um, I now understand a little bit more about uh, the role of the staff at the college level. Um, and I would like to hear from uh, um, my fellow chapter member, Julie, uh, about uh, what volunteering means to her at the chapter level. So, okay. um, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, Julie. Um, sorry, Julie, Julie you're muted, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay, so volunteering for me at a chapter level, um, it's a way for me to give back to my community by doing something I'm passionate about. And I truly believe it's the more you give, the more you get in return. And the more involved you are, the more you benefit from being part of OSET. It also gives me um, abilities to enhance social networking with various different fields, not just my own. And I get to meet tons of other people um, of all different ages. Nice button to unmute. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Um, in addition, uh, please provide with some detail about uh, what do you get out of volunteering with the college initiative? Um, it's basically just an opportunity to speak to classes and um, of technicians and technologists at various that are in various technology fields. Uh, for example, this past spring, I had the pleasure to speak to the civil, mechanical, and environmental classes at Canador, and share my experience with OSET. And basically. Um, kind of offer if they needed advice or if they wanted to speak specifically to somebody in their own field that I could put them in contact with them. Great. Julie, thank you for your insightful answers. Uh, based on uh, what you just discussed, uh, please uh, tell the members uh, here today, uh, many of whom are chapter volunteers, why you feel uh, volunteering with the colleges is important in your role uh, within your chapter. Um, I think it's important because it shows that the students that you, um, you're there to support them. You're not just there for being an OSET member, but like I said before, the more you volunteer, the more you give out, they see that you're a wealth of knowledge and that there's tons of information out there that they can have access if they're willing to get involved in their chapters. Great. Now, since you've been involved with this initiative, um, have you seen an uptick in membership engagement at your chapter? Um, since COVID, surprisingly, we did see an increase of a few um, members that joined us. We've actually had a, a student representative that's joined us this year, which we haven't had in a few years. So I believe with having everything online 
it kind of attracted more people because they don't have to leave the comfort of their own homes. So that was a bonus for us. So it does make it challenging um, to try to get people more engaged in our chapter, but it also, we also gained a few people to sit on our chapter. So that was a benefit. Great, thank you for that. Yes, this uh, this uh, last couple of years has been very uh, challenging for for a lot of us, uh, for all of us, I should say. And uh, we have gained and learned a lot uh, uh, of uh, thing about how to do things and where to go, how to go around. And uh, again, uh, it's great. Now, thank you again, Julie. I hope some members online today uh, who are not volunteering with uh, with their chapter will consider putting their name forward. And, um, and assisting with the uh, colleges or other initiatives. Um, I want to reinforce the importance of uh, having volunteers uh, support Tricia is, uh, and support Tricia in giving the presentation. Uh, remember, it's you, the volunteer, who is uh, OSAT's and the profession's uh, best advocate. So now, I would like to invite also as a chapter program advisor, um, Catherine Boyer, uh, many of whom uh, you may have had pleasure to meet and work with. Uh, she will be given a high level update on the June 29th chapter report uh, that came out after a brainstorming session uh, from the last in-person conference in Collingwood. The brainstorming session was uh, highly successful as many members provided comprehensive feedback uh, that made up the report. Thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you, Shervan, and good morning, everyone. Um, I'm thrilled to be providing this update. While my predecessor put the plan together, uh, I and the PAS staff have worked hard to implement as much of the plan as possible. The chapter report is based on one major question. How can OSET chapters better engage members now and into the future and find ways to provide more value to the members? Members were placed into a random group and came up with a host of answers. One of the main asks of our members um, was that they wanted more events and more continuing professional development, or as I like to call it, CPD. Well, as you know, OSET began providing discounted piece, uh, CPD offerings as of April 2020 in both technical and soft skills. With over 70 offerings in 2020 and another 50 in 2021, including four at this conference, these offerings have become a staple with OSET and have continued to, and will continue to be offered in 2022. In addition to OSET wide CPD offerings, many chapters are now providing CPD by partnering with organizations and members. The second most important item that came out of the report was an improvement on communication tools used by chapters from increased social media presence to overall chapter communication. As many of you are aware, each chapter now has a quarterly at a glance e-newsletter. We have also helped to support the chapter's email communications by providing social media training with LinkedIn and Instagram. We will be finalizing the chapter welcome package and best practices by early 2020. And as you know, as you found out today, we are all look, we're also looking at implementing an engagement platform that will be a central tool for chapters and membership. This will include the option for chapters to initiate men mentorship programs, to engage students, young professionals, and internationally educated professionals. Another main point of feedback was marketing the value of OSET membership to students and employers. While college outreach has continued throughout the pandemic and chapter members have been involved with this activity, we have not seen, or we have not been able to leverage the college the same extent with the lack of in-person events due to government restrictions. Additionally, chapters outreach in a broader community has also suffered due to the pandemic as many community activities um, involved in-person interaction. OSET launched its corporate 360 partnership program during the pandemic and has 28 partners and counting. We ask that chapters continue to assist with the outreach um, initiative and in many cases, our members are the first point of contact when bringing 360 partners on board. I now hand back the floor to Shervin. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine, for that uh, high level overview. Um, 
even uh, even if it was possible to see all the ideas through the uh, fruition um, due to the pandemic, we hope to initiate the remaining ideas in 2022. Uh, this brings me uh, to the interactive portion of this member forum. We acknowledge that uh, the pandemic has uh, changed everything, uh, including how we uh, may approach growing our chapters. Therefore, uh, after almost two years of upheaval, uh, it is important to revis revisit our brainstorming session to gauge how members need, uh, member needs have, uh, have changed. As mentioned earlier, we are uh, looking uh, for feedback from our members online today. Uh, as with the uh, 2019 conference, uh, we, will, we will be placing members into breakout rooms to brainstorm the following questions. Number one, um, what can OSA do to increase champ chapter member participation? Two, question number two is, uh, what can chapter executives do to increase chapter member uh, participation? Question number three, uh, what can uh, chapters do to provide support to in corporate outreach? And of course, number four, uh, what can we do to keep student members engaged? Now, uh, don't worry about memorizing these questions as uh, they have been uh, added to the Zoom chat. Um, once in your uh, breakout rooms, all members will be unmuted and given 20 minutes uh, to acquaint themselves with the other members in the room and uh, answer their four questions. We recommend uh, that you turn your camera on as it is uh, small personable, uh, but uh, it is not a requirement. Uh, each room needs to have uh, one member who will volunteer to take notes on their breakout rooms and answer the, and the answers to the questions. Uh, each note taker will uh, uh, present their, answer, their an these answers to everyone in Zoom following the closure of their breakout rooms. The uh, chapter and program advisor, Catherine Boyer, will stop uh, by each break room uh, to get the name of the uh, note takers. Um, in the next couple of minutes, uh, you'll be placed into your breakout rooms, please, and uh, please be patient uh, while we set this up. Okay, thank you, Shervin. And in the meantime, as promised, if there's any questions that anyone had regarding any of the information, uh, even in the membership engagement tool or anything pertaining to our new initiative for uh, integrating the chapters into college outreach, I would be happy to hear your question here in the chat. And thank you for all the nice compliments. Everyone's been uh, complimenting the staff in the, in the presentation. So we really appreciate that. It's nice to see a lot of familiar faces. So I see some of my contacts at different colleges some chapter people that help me out regularly. So I see uh, Maurice from Peterborough. So hi, Maurice. I think I saw Diane from Peterborough as well. David Saunders, it's always nice to see you. Peter from London. Nice to see all your faces on here. Let me see if we have any other questions here. Okay, so I, I, if there isn't any questions and everyone can proceed to their breakout rooms and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your session. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Okay, well, welcome back everyone. Uh, now it's time for the group to pro provide the feedback to the questions. Uh, before I uh, call upon the, our note takers, I want to reiterate that uh, all responses will be put in a report that will be shared with the uh, chapters following the virtual conference. So I would now like to call uh, on the, from the breakout room number one, if you could uh, step forward and introduce yourself, please. You can unmute and... So everybody should be able to unmute themselves. If you're having issues or you can't unmute yourself, just send me a message in the chat. Okay, I'm unmuted now. And 
Mm -hmm. This one's down here. And I thought it would be so far. If I can answer question number two. Okay. So actually, uh, can we start off with question number one? Um, do you have an answer for us for our, our comments for from your group by any chance for question number one? Uh, what can OSA do to increase uh, chapter member uh, participation? Well, for myself, if I'm, if I'm speaking, um, answering question number two led to improving question number one. So by okay. answering, I'll, I'll answer with number two first. Uh, as, okay. a new, as a new member to the executive or to the, the uh, chapter, uh, one thing to find out that is if we have factory tours, there's factories in every town. So, so by introducing tours for the chapter of each factory, um, that, that increased participation. And then once we had the participation, that led to discussion about uh, becoming a, a regular participant and ultimately joining the chapter as a either executive member or just being an active participant and um, identifying what an OSAP member does. As well, it gives insight into what your local community manufactures and it gives you an opportunity to widen your discussion range because most, most of us um, we're lifers in whatever job we're at, and maybe we only make, I'll just say, windshield wipers or something like that, but you want to know how mufflers are made. That's, that's a good icebreaker. That's my comment. It may not have to be uh, a factory tour either. It can, there's a host of different opportunities for different facilities, whether it's a wastewater treatment plant or a, a compressor station for TCPL or what have you as well. You understand. So that basically, yeah, so that basically encompasses both in the question number one and two then, correct? Yeah. Great. What about question number three? Uh, what can chapters do to provide uh, support in corporate outreach? Any thoughts on that? What we actually came up with is like maybe increase um, our presence, visual presence um, with billboards or flyers or that kind of documents going out. Because um, it seems just sending emails out, it, we're not getting to um, all the members that we have. A lot of the time they just see an email from OSET and it's what maybe two, three, 5% of us that actually opens it and reads it. And the other thing that we had talked about is um, getting PEO and the different associations like us more involved. Because if we do that as a group, we might have five people interested. They might have five people interested. So in the long run, we end up with maybe a group of 30 for a tour somewhere, which also will help with our networking. We get to meet other people in different um, fields. All right, thank you, Julie. Um, question number four then, um, uh, what can we do to keep student members engaged? Any comments on that one? Are you, this is Rob, are you still going with just group number one? Group number one, yes. Okay, sorry. Sorry, and that was populated in the column two, probably should have been populated in column three. The last comments? Yeah. Can I kind of jump ahead? I think we're part of group number seven, so. Oh. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so if we can perhaps stick to the uh, group numbering, so group number one, um, uh, any comments on uh, 
the uh, number question number three. Uh, uh, we'll move that uh, comment from uh, Julie to uh, group seven um, and uh, see if we can hear back from group number one from uh, on question number three. Okay, I've, uh, I've made it. I'm sorry for being uh, tardy here a little bit. I uh, missed out on the other questions, um, but I am here, Albert Pushkoviak, uh, on behalf of group number one. Um, so could you just reiterate question number three for me, please? Certainly. Uh, what can chapters do to provide support in corporate outreach? Okay, I think uh, our group talked about this uh, and uh, we, we came up with the idea that um, we really need to have a better a better presence in um, industry specific uh, events and uh, group groups and such. So I think polling our membership and trying to identify where these uh, industry specific gatherings are and looking for opportunities for sponsorship as well as maybe subsidizing members attending these events um, might help increase our presence and also, um, well, increase the standing in the eyes of the employers or organizations that are attending these events. Or hosting these events. Great, thank you for that. Um, how about question number four? Um, what can we do to uh, keep student members engaged? Same, same for me. You're looking for group one's thoughts? Yes. Uh, yes. We didn't quite make it there in our discussion, but I, I have some personal thoughts I can provide. Um, Please do. I think uh, a strong connection to the teachers and the staff at each college each of these schools is very important. I think uh, uh, communication between our chapters and the college uh, uh, representative on, on the staff side uh, is key so that we have the same contacts and we know who to re reach out to. Um, I think obtaining or getting a student on your uh, membership uh, is important and having them function as a liaison uh, so that they can get that, get that integration essentially between the chapter level and uh, the student level. So that means accessing their learning management systems like Blackboard and such and, and having a presence there. Great, thank you for that. Um, now let's go to group number two. Um, same, I'll, I'll pose the same question to you. Uh, what can OSAD do to increase chapter member participation? Question number one. Uh, hi there, group two, Chris Johnston. Um, Thanks. So for what OSIT can do, uh, we think that we uh, should continue with the virtual events, even when the pandemic is over. Uh, for those of us in uh, remote communities, uh, chapters especially, this virtual stuff has been a godsend for meetings, conferences, uh, CBD. It's made everything so much easier. When we have a meeting, half of us have to drive quite a distance. Um, to incentivize face-to-face, uh, -face, um, it was suggested to provide swag for those members who show up, um, which I think our chapter actually kind of does. And then the other thing is CPD, CPD, CPD. Uh, a lot of people, they start out just wanting to make sure they got their CPD requirements. Um, and, and so they show up and then they find out how great we are and they keep coming back. Uh, for number two, uh, what can chapter executives do to get more chapter member participation? Um, it was suggested that we formulate a broad spectrum to, to do a little thinking of volunteer opportunities so that you can match both the skill set and the personalities of the members involved. Some people are really uncomfortable talking in front of people, um, but, there, but there's a wide range of things that, that members can do and, and to match them up to the, to the members. Um, the other thing is the uh, sharing, which I think with the new website is going to be very helpful. Uh, sharing between chapters of what they've done and what worked and what did not. Um, and it'll be really great to be able to look at other chapters with sim similar demographics, uh, whether it be with uh, geographic, age, gender diversity, ethnic diversity, disciplines, everything. If you can find chapters similar to yours and what's worked and what hasn't, we can maybe streamline that to, to stick, all get on the same page. Um, and I think uh, that someone had said that uh, the best practices module by the young professionals has already kind of started on that. So, so that's something we can tap into. Uh, for number three, um, what can chapters do to provide support in corporate outreach? Uh, it, it comes down to uh, emphasizing the benefits to the students, both for employment and for the potential increase in salary. 
um, make sure we're also emphasizing to industry the benefits of hiring OSEP members, and then let's get these two together um, to invite the industry to the events to meet students and they can get networking. And finally, am I going too fast? No. Whoever's doing that great typing. No. Um, what I'm can we do to keep so the members so engaged? <laughs> Don't worry yeah. about this. You're We're not typing, though, are you? <laughs> no, but um, like like Kasha well, said, we re we're recording this as well, so it's, that's okay. Okay, good. Uh, what can we do to keep student members engaged? Um, again, incentivize uh, the meetings, uh, offer swag, and uh, make sure we have a good amount of uh, CPD and uh, speakers from the industry so that the students can can really get a, a feel for what the industry they want to get into is looking for. Great, thank you for that, Chris, appreciate it. Um, so let's move on to group number three. And question number one, if you could perhaps step forward and introduce yourself, please. Group number three. Uh, yeah, Dennis Martin. Yes, thank you, and uh, lots of great input. Uh, so I expect there's going to be possibly some duplicates here, but um, now we might have been a little bit sidetracked and kind of like meandered between a few different questions, but I'll uh, try to keep it in order. Um, so a comment that the virtual um, ha engagement has improved some involvement with the uh, students. Um, so just a positive side. Um, now the less social side is uh, you know the in-person, we're certainly looking forward to having the in-person uh, connection. Um, I think that uh, you know the human contact um, you know really doesn't uh, really there, there's not really much to compare to that. I mean certainly the benefits of see you know all these uh, other virtual events are great um, and easy and less transportation and cost and comfort, but uh, we can't beat the personal uh, interaction. So we're looking forward to that. Um, that'll bring back, uh, you know, wine tours, picnics, barbecues, and, and that, uh, sharing uh, more than just the technical aspect of things. So getting an increase in participation in a few items here, looking at uh, sending out a poll, um, requesting feedback on what some uh, preferences would be in types of activities, uh, personal activities, uh, tour, plant tours is a good one local network and uh, career shows. So uh, that, that kind of bleeds into the corporate side um, and recognizing and awarding uh, volunteers as well as another one. So part participation and volunteering kind of falls in the same order if we're having the participation, getting involved and becoming part of our chapter. Um, so again, bleeds into the next. Uh, next is what can the chapter executive do to increase member participation? Um, executive involvement, oh, yeah, follow through with meeting and, and events. So, I mean, there's, I think there's a lot of uh, circumstances where, um, you know, there might be some changes or, you know, adjustments to events and meetings that might occur. So it's just being, being on top of uh, if there's an adjustment communicating that. So communication should be right up there. And I'm really glad to see that there's going to be that interactive uh, platform that's going to really, really benefit a lot of these uh, issues. Career opportunities. Uh, yeah, so sharing with the members, students, professionals, um, that uh, the member, the benefit of being certified and being a member um, you know, it has value um, to multiple industries, uh, holding career fairs and having the involvement uh, so that there's an engagement with the public. Because um, when you do have the engagement with the public from experiences that you just see um, that there's an appreciation for your being there to answer questions and be involved and have that, uh, again, personal interaction and we'll talk on that. But, uh, Science fairs um, are also great. Uh, member participation gives them an activity that they can do and uh, interact with, uh, again, professionals and students. So what can we do to support corporate outreach? Uh, 
So community community involvement, I think it would be one, um, and and I think uh, having our name, um, and again, use the the word brand. Um, so it, I don't think anything hurts to have ourselves branded um, or or, or so, you know, promote um, who we are, and in the involvement with the community, whether it be you know like a birthday or something that we get out there on the streets and doing things that are involved. Um, is one aspect and other volunteering um, positions that we can kind of like partner with uh, other groups. Um, I know there's some criteria that we have to follow, but having a community, for example, um, I've been involved for several years. Uh, I haven't been for a couple of years now, but um, it was definitely uh, fulfilling and uh, recognizable. Uh, 360 corporate, uh, the 360. Um, or corporate uh, outreach program. Uh, it only works if we activate it. Um, we are you know, taking action as chapters. Um, individual and professional um, corporate connections. So, uh, and again, uh, providing some assurance um, to our members and to the corporate uh, aspect and viewpoint that there's value to certification sharing maybe some stories or sharing uh, more specifics about uh, you know, the criteria that, it, that is required to be certified. So I think there's some, you know, probably several corporations out there that are familiar um, with who we are and what we do. So education uh, to be the corporate member. Keeping student members engaged. Uh, this is uh, a lot of good ideas. Corporate, uh, sorry, uh, engineering challenges. Um, so kind of like a point system or a plaque or award system. Uh, student reps, most colleges have a uh, student rep for each class or department. Um, and uh, interacting with their student rep meeting and dean, uh, usually in this case would be the uh, tech dean of technology. Um, most colleges have like said this uh, periodic by meetings with all the tech the representatives the class reps so it's a great opportunity for us to take a few minutes show up and introduce ourselves describe what we do and invite them to come to our meetings and our events um, personal interact hearing symposium uh, students uh, involved in that connecting careers opportunities uh, that topic came up several times with a lot of a lot of these events that we are promoting ourselves and describing who we are as an association. Um, we're getting resumes asking, you know, are we hiring? Uh, so it's an interesting um, response to our presence, but it's uh, it's kind of speaks to what the interest is of the students. Location of the meeting: we try to hold as many meetings as possible and events at, uh, in our case, Loyalist College and Clinic, just to make it you know efficient for the students to get to uh, use of time. Of course, invite them to activities. I try to find a way of communicating. Uh, Blackboard's a good one as far as, uh, I know that there's a topic about that, um, discussion about uh, Blackboard and other utilities that we can utilize for just ensuring that we're visible, that we're available. So that's, that's kind of, I think, a coverage of uh, most of what we have discussed Thank you, Dennis. A very detailed uh, report. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, moving on to group number five. Um, please uh, step forward, introduce yourself, and um, tell us what you found out. Group number five was with Julie, Jurgen, Maurice, Michael, Wayne, just as a heads up. Okay. Uh, who uh, was there Thank a you. speaker? Okay, thank you, Julia. <laughs> I thought I was part of seven, but I guess I'm part of five. Sorry for that, guys. Um, <laughs> no problem. So a lot of uh, our points have already been brought up. Um, mm -hmm. We did talk for um, question number sure. one, uh, okay. brand recognition um draws for swag and invite other members like PO's or um, CEO to different tours and everything but update our 
um, information on a monthly basis. And so they know what's going on and it's not just um, like the old OSEP page that we had for chapters was just um, put there, but never really utilized. So if people went in, they saw that we had things that happened, but it was maybe a year outdated. So to keep that more relevant and so people know that there's a location that they can get all that information from. Um, in various partnerships, if we can get on board and in our, or within our chapters um, to, again, for networking and getting that going a little bit better. So our presence is known. Um, our question number two, we had talked about chapter surveys. Um, like every few years, there's a salary survey um, that we do and offer events based on specialties. So if you're in civil, kind of aim it towards civil. If you're in mechanical, mechanical, environmental, and so on and so forth. There's another option that we were talking about. Um, question number three, how can you provide support in corporate outreach? Um, I think with everything that OSET is doing, we're going to be able to communicate in outreach to the different groups in our industries by allowing uh, the, the new um, infrastructure, not infrastructure, but our, um, our new design for the web page that is going on right now. So that's going to help that way. Um, number four, on how to keep students engaged, um, we were talking about competitions in different fields, building bridges and that kind of stuff, um, offering swag, do more presentations specific to the field and interests that they have. And yeah, that's pretty much what we talked about. Hey, some uh, some great ideas again. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, continuing on uh, to group number six, uh, if you could uh, identify yourself and step forward, please. Um, sure. Uh, group number six, uh, team six. See if I can get this going here. Okay. So I'm Rob Wright. Um, so I'm part of the Lanark Leeds and Grenville chapter as the past chair. So we had some really good ideas within Team 6, but uh, like um, some of the previous ones we're talking about, a lot of them were overlapping. One of the big things with number one was visibility. So visibility for increasing your chapter membership participation uh, through such things already being done, like LinkedIn, Facebook. I mean, just improve on the social media contacts and, and uh, connections. The other thing that came out of for number one was increase the website usability. Um, and I know there are a couple in the team that were talking about um, how it was complicated at first and wasn't obvious for some of the, uh, the links, um, especially going from the membership page back to the main page. Uh, it wasn't necessarily obvious. So there may be some ideas in improving the uh, usability because I mean, it is true if you hit more than three clicks on something, then you lose interest. Um, so that was one of the big things that came out of that. We spent a lot of time on the increasing the chapter membership participation uh, through things like the joint events with the PEO, um, participation in high school uh, science fairs as judges, again, along the lines of visibility, um, participating in the engineering month, uh, specifically targeting the youth um, with such things as the building bridges and the engineering activities, um, but also doing uh, student uh, recognition awards. That might be more for number four, so hold off on that one. Um, the mentoring program for number two was a big one that came out. That came out both in our discussions with number two and number four. 
Um, so basically, you know, partnering between chapter members and somebody that's uh, in that profession. So people that are joining the, you know, chapter that are looking for insight into different pro professions, whether you're looking for a change or looking for what, you know, more experience in what you have that you're currently enlisted in. Um, for number two, also the notification, the e-blast notifications out to your members, um, but also in lines of confirming commitment to events. Uh, some of the ideas were charging an upfront cost and then uh, reimbursing the members when they showed up. So that was one of the big things that uh, a lot of the chapters have experienced is how to get more members out to events. So one idea was the incentive with the commitment of, you know, using Eventbrite or Sur not SurveyMonkey, but Eventbrite to, you know, basically charge an upfront cost and then reimburse them when they show up. Uh, for number three, and I was trying to be quick, just in interest of time. Uh, for number three, for the outreach, we talked, to, we didn't really have a lot of feedback on this, but one of the big things, again, was in lines of commenting on posts uh, within LinkedIn and other social media for interaction to local industries, just to show the visibility or the, um, the interest from people that are uh, OSAP members in that type of an in, uh, industry post. Um, you know, when, when people post articles on LinkedIn, you know, representing, you know, some upcoming technology, the participation from a chapter member provides that visibility. And on lines of number four, again, the mentoring. So basically, one of the big things was mentoring within the schools. So even before the, the, um, students are members, providing that insight of an open house night in the colleges or in the high school for students to listen to people within the profession that are chapter members to try and um, invite them or to provide insight into the industry um, and basically, you know, provide insight into the membership within OSAT, how beneficial it is in the industry. Um, having an open house at the college with pizza and pop. I think this is one of the things Dennis had done in the past with the Loyalist College. Um, and basically the connection between the student and people in the industry. That was kind of the big thing that came away from that number four. That's all. Team six was awesome. Great. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for that input. Appreciate it. Um, Okay, now I realize we are uh, running, uh, we've passed our time allowed us for this uh, for this event, but I'm still okay to continue on, and I hope you are as well. So moving on to uh, group number seven, uh, if you could perhaps, if you if you don't mind, step forward and introduce yourself, and uh, tell us what you found out. Sure, that, that's that's all for the groups. Oh, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was one extra group. Oh, great. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Appreciate it, everybody. Um, yeah, again, um, thank you for your feedback. Uh, this is incredibly helpful uh, to all SAT staff and the other members present today. Um, may uh, Many of whom make up the uh, chapter executives uh, here. Um, there's nothing better than the sharing of ideas and knowledge uh, going forward. Um, now, before we end uh, today's uh, member forum, I'd like to begin by thanking panelists and members who took part uh, and provided their uh, feedback. And uh, please be sure to check uh, your uh, inbox uh, for a report in early uh, 2020. Um, I also like to note that uh, while this is the final panel session of the virtual conference, uh, we still have uh, regional meetings this evening. Uh, we also have our last uh, CPD session on Industry 4.0 and uh, Cyber Physical Systems in Manufacturing uh, with, uh, with Andy Simon, uh, Simoni. Um, Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering from University of uh, New Brunswick. Uh, to close today's session um, and the uh, conference, I invite OSAT's uh, uh, President Rosanna Baggs uh, to provide the uh, uh, closing remarks. 
Thank you, Sharon. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank members, non-members, industry professionals, and government representatives for attending OSET's virtual conference. I'd like to thank the hardworking OSET staff and dedicated volunteers uh, who were involved in this wonderful uh, and successful conference. This could not have happened without you. Uh, while this concludes our virtual conference, the Young Professional uh, Town Hall event, which includes panel sessions, trivia, and keynote speakers will occur, occur tomorrow, Friday, November 19th, starting at noon. Uh, members and non-members of all ages are welcome to come out and take part in the fun and interactive event. I want to thank you very much for joining today and have a lovely day.